To Rebelpreneur Radio, helping you break the rules and build the business you need for the life you want. And now, broadcasting his pirate signal from somewhere beyond the status quo. Here's your host, best selling author, marketing and media strategist, Ralph Brogdon. Hello and welcome to Rebelpreneur Radio. It's the show that helps you build the business you need so you can live the life you want. I'm Ralph Brogdon. You know, it's kind of hard to build a business if you're not attracting clients. And to do that, you've got to learn how to conduct marketing and sales, but they are very two or two very different things, two very different mindsets and skill sets, but you've got to be able to master them both in order to attract your ideal clients and to get paid what you are worth. Otherwise, you just have a job and it's it's not even a fun job because you can't take time off or call in sick or anything. So if you're going to do this thing, do it right. And today's guest is going to help you make the necessary shifts in your mind as we discuss not just your typical marketing and sales, but relationship marketing. And um, so I'm, I'm really happy to have Landon Porter join us on today's program. He shows entrepreneurs how to acquire their ideal clients by giving them permission to be themselves Landon says it's about opening relationships, not closing deals. I really love that approach. Landon, welcome to Rebelpreneur Radio. Thanks a lot for having me on, Ralph. I appreciate it. Tell us a little bit about your background and um, what got you started in this this area of relationship marketing. Sure. So I'm going way back when almost to the very beginnings of the Internet. I've been a sales guy. I've got about 20 years of sales under my belt at this point. And about halfway through my sales career, I had a midlife crisis, so to speak. One morning at about 4.30, I was looking at myself in the mirror, getting ready to go to work. And I remember standing there saying, I absolutely hate you. And <laughs> it took me a couple of months to kind of figure out what the what the deal was, what the issue was. Ultimately, it came out that I was so good at acquiring clients that I created a lot of headache for myself afterwards because I was able to close and bring on clients that I really didn't like, I didn't enjoy working with, and so on. And uh, interestingly enough, it actually caused me um, a couple of months after that to quit that job. And the industry that I was in was uh, in a boom. We're going back to the last recession. A um, couple of weeks later, they got me talked into coming back um, to work for the firm. And when I, when I went back, it occurred to me that if my current process of selling potential clients was so good that I could bring on anybody, it was me that was the issue. And I had to figure out a different way to identify who it was that I wanted to work with and then how to enroll them into our business. So mm-hmm. that's kind of where this comes from and how I kind of got my start. What, what was the light bulb moment for you that took you from, uh, I guess the traditional sales approach to realizing that it's about opening relationships and not closing deals. What was that transformation about? Sure. So at about the same time I had that, that realization that I really did like my world got so bad that I hated Sundays, right? Cause Monday I had to go back to the office. It got so bad that my frustration kind of bled into all the other areas of my life. And at this, at that time, my kids were going from little kids to preteens and anybody who's got kids that have gone through that know that the relationship with them changes. And so I'm, I'm going through both of these situations at roughly the same time. And it hit me. Oh, the problem that I'm having is actually liking the people that I'm having to serve. And there's so much of that. I, I had a book of clients, about 400 and 450 clients, and there was so much of that going on. I was having to deal with day in and day out people that I didn't like. And it occurred to me that, <laughs> oh, it is literally the relationships that I've created that I'm not happy with that are causing me all this frustration. 
And so when I examined it, it, I remember I was sitting at the kitchen table with my, my kids one evening and the conversation was radically different all of a sudden than it had been for the last five or six years. And it hit me. They're beginning to understand that they're an individual in this microcosm, not that they are the microcosm. And because of that, it allowed me to see my relationship with them now was ready to change because they were growing up and it just, it hit me. I, ah, it's the relationship. And so once I understood that, I started thinking about my process on bringing clients on and, and, you know, I'd been through a lot of sales training and I'd really been taught well on how to communicate effectively, how to influence and persuade when needed. And essentially I was that sales guy. I was really good at talking people into the thing, really, whether it was good for them or not, Mm -hmm. if they stayed on the phone, they bought, right? So in that process, I, I kind of started to unwind. It was me that was causing this, and that led me to, oh, I finally achieved the ability to essentially be a chameleon on a sales call. That wasn't necessarily a good thing. What would it look like if I had an entire base of clients that I actually enjoyed speaking with and helping and supporting and serving? And that really was the change. I really love that. What a journey of self-discovery about who you are, who you want to work with. And a couple of things jump out at me as you're you're speaking there, Landon. Landon, uh, first of all, a lot of people talk about their ideal clients. Attract your ideal client. That language is is uh, pretty commonplace. Uh, but but you just describe exactly what an ideal client is. It's someone that you know, like, and trust, mm-hmm. and that that kind of dovetails into the second observation that I have. And I talk about this in, in my materials as well, that people want to do business with people that they know, like and trust. I've always approached that as, OK, you need to let people know who you are so they can like you so they can trust you. What you just did is turn that upside down. And you're saying To attract your ideal client, you have to know who they are, you have to like them, and you have to trust them. It has to be people that you want to work with, not just people that you can sell to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's there's a a statement that I use in in my world and, and with my audience. It's our job as somebody with something to sell is not to go for the yes or go for the no. It's to deliver the yes or the no. And more often than not, it, it comes down to the positioning that we naturally create by not needing that specific client. We all understand that we want the next client, but if we can separate those two, it gets pretty easy to ask ourselves this question. If these people flew into my state and we went out to dinner and a blizzard hit and I was stuck with them for two weeks and they had to stay with me and my family, am I going to enjoy that? Right. Um, it really comes down to that. We're, we're tribal beings naturally. And there's a reason that some of us like others and some of us don't. And it really comes back to this. This is the, the main thing I wish everybody understood. Salespeople are trained to manufacture relatability. And people with something to sell who are looking for the right kind of clients to serve need to avoid the manufactured part. If we can just harness the natural relatability, it's really easy to find people that are our kind of people. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that really takes all the pressure off. I, I think one of the challenges is that we end up trying to look and sound like everybody else. And you hit on something really, um, really interesting in the introduction here that you teach people how to acquire their ideal clients by giving them permission to be themselves. Expand on that. What what does that mean? There's nobody on this planet that can be more you than you can be. And that's the, the fundamental thing that's missing from marketing, right? Marketing is the vast majority of how we acquire clients and sales is really just the, the small part of the conversation to determine if we're going to work together. The marketing aspect, especially in today's world where we're all online, right? If you want to look up somebody, you don't call them anymore. You don't go knock on their business door. You look them up on the internet. 
Stop trying to be something that you're not or more or less or different. If you really just express who it is that you actually are, you'll avoid all of the awkward conversations with the people that aren't really a good fit. You'll totally eliminate all of the trying to convince people that they should work with you. And you'll elicit out of the woodwork all of the people that go, ah, that's my guy. That's Mm -hmm. my people. And it really just comes from you know, this This word's been thrown around so bad the last decade or so, authentic. What does it even mean anymore? Well, what it really means is stop trying, just be. And when people kind of start to figure that out, they go, oh, this is so much easier than what I was trying to do. And I say, I know. All you had to do was give yourself permission to be who you are. Wow. And, and you know, that then opens up a whole... A uh, different conversation about people don't know who they are. They don't know what they want. So then that, yep. that's really something you've got to get straight in your own head and in your own heart before you even go out there and try to market and sell your services. That's a fact. Self-awareness is not something that's easy. It's not something that most of us um, are naturally doing every waking hour is trying to observe who and what we're about and how we are. But really that's what it comes down to. Every relationship we have, the, the, the value of that relationship and how well that relationship is situated comes down to us actually being who we are and what we're about. Um, this is kind of where I vary from everybody else in the online sales training world really is, yep, here's how to get clients. That's what they want to buy. So they buy it. And then we go through a process where I help them identify who they are, what they're about, what their genius zone actually is, what they want to do with their clients and figure out who it is that if they got stuck with them for a, you know, a week or two in their home, couldn't even go outside, they'd actually enjoy that. And yeah, it comes down to looking in the mirror a little bit. Hmm. So tell us a little bit more about once you personally have attracted uh, your ideal client, uh, what do you do with them? And and who is your ideal client? Who benefits the most from this uh, new perspective or this updated perspective on relationship marketing and authenticity? Sure. I have two groupings of what I call ICA or ideal client avatar. The the main group of people that I work with are people who have between five and 15 years experience at their craft, generally out on their own for two to three years and find themselves all of a sudden having a hard time acquiring clients because they've tapped out their network, right? Everybody that they've known, all the people that they've been connected to, everybody that could become a client has already become a client. I, I identify with them by not being something that I'm not. I, I've got a big beard. I wear tool concert t-shirts. My language when I'm not on somebody else's show is, is, um, fairly loose. I'm kind of opinionated. I've right. I'm me. I demonstrate who I am and what I'm about. And I tell people that I love some of you. I like most of you. There's a few of you I don't like, and I'm sure it's mutual (laughs) that right. I mean, it's, it's real. Like the authenticity and that word, we can kind of set it aside. The bottom line is it's real. Mm-hmm. Um, the people that I'm interested in working with are the people that are good at what they do. They know part of the reason they want to do what they want to do is so they can serve other people legitimately, not because it's some fancy way of, of trying to, you know, move their agenda of wanting more money down the line so they feel better about themselves. But people that are actually good at what they want to do and and do it with people they can actually serve. And it's pretty easy for me to call those people out in the marketplace. My my main market is on Facebook. And so it's it's pretty easy to see who's real and who's not. The second much smaller group of people are people that within the last couple of years have picked up a new skill set that they're learning how to monetize. And they've never, in most cases, they've never had to get clients, but they want to know how to do it the right way. And here's, and I think you'll probably appreciate this. 
a lot of people look at learning sales, right? This process that we use to turn somebody from prospect into client. A lot of people look at that and think, man, I can go to a three day weekend and I can learn all these persuasion hacks. I can learn all these techniques. Sales is like martial arts. It's a really dangerous art form unless you really know what you're doing. And that actually takes years of experience and you got to get knocked around a little bit. Yeah. And, and if you're not careful, you could really hurt yourself and hurt other people w- without meaning yep. to. Right. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, and, you know, there's nothing worse than than figuring that out after you've allowed somebody to obligate you with their money. <laughs> right. And this is this is kind of the thing that that. Those of us doing the client acquisition thing, quote unquote, for the long term, we're looking at it from the standpoint of, cool, I'm going to make some money. You're going to you're going to sign up with me and I'm going to do everything I can to help you. But now, essentially, your problem is my problem because I'm now obligated to work with you. Kind of back to the very beginning of this whole thing. That's my thing. Just because I can turn somebody into a client doesn't mean that I should. And that's kind of what I, I think if, if our, if our global model of small business was structured with that mentality, there'd be a lot of us that would have far fewer issues with people we've done business with and the rating system for businesses, we wouldn't see one star reviews. Like it just wouldn't exist. Hmm. And I think you're very, very accurate uh, with that assessment. It, it, it always brings me back around to, the biggest challenge, why is it so difficult for people, business owners, solopreneurs, repopreneurs, gifted people, people who are skilled, people who want to serve and, and do it from a, a good motivation? Uh, what's the biggest obstacle? What gets in the way of them doing this and doing it consistently? I think the biggest obstacle is a misunderstanding of the the difference between the term lead and the term prospect. And I'm not the only one that's taught sales this way. There's a lot of really good sales trainers that over the last five to 10 years have kind of started coming out with like relationship economy. That's not my term. It's, it's where we're headed because we've become so openly social and the barrier of connecting with people has dropped. I think first the issue is not understanding just because somebody wants or needs a service that you can provide or a product does not necessarily mean they're a prospect for you. Because people with something to sell, generally the motivation on the front end of that is I've got a business, I've got to bring in the revenue, I've got to get it in. Mm -hmm. That agenda is totally misplaced. It's, it's too right now instead of what about tomorrow? I think that's the, the biggest issue fundamentally. And that leads into shoehorning somebody that's kind of close enough into becoming a client and then now causing further and further problems down the line, which let's be real. Most people who serve clients on an ongoing basis don't actually even know that many of those problems are occurring because the communication, because they don't want to talk to them. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how I see it. And that's, that's interesting because um, I I run into that same challenge um, with in in my agency background. And it's the same on the agency level where you're talking about uh, multiple thousand dollars of budget. Um, there's just as much pressure at that level to take on anyone who can pay your fee as it is in, in the small business or the, uh, the uh, solopreneur level um, that the lack of strategy, the lack of thinking long-term causes us to make decisions in the short term that end up really uh, hurting us long-term. And, and that's the whole point. So, what can, what do we need to do? How do we become more strategic in our thinking, in our practicing of, of these uh, techniques um, so that we're opening relationships and not just trying to close deals? What, what do we need to do to begin to improve in, in this area? I think, and, and where I start with everybody is, is 
we need to get clear on what we will and will not tolerate. And we need to get really selfish about things that, that, you know, all of those little pet peeves, you were on time to the second for our call today. Time and being on time is one of my pet peeves. Yeah, mine if too. I, yeah. if, <laughs> which if which is why a, I called you right at the moment. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's my it's thing. A, yeah, it's a self-respect thing and it's transferable, right? Mm-hmm. It You being on time lets me know that you respect yourself, which means that you're probably going to give me enough room to allow me to earn some respect with you. It's it's that thing. we we're, I don't think, and this goes back to the self-awareness piece, there's so many things we let slide that we really don't need to. And if we get clear on what we will and will not tolerate – pretty soon we've got a, a pretty black and white list of I'm, I won't tolerate being treated like that. I won't tolerate this. These are the things that I will tolerate. And I don't think people have a, a, a baseline to start from, right? Everybody, do they want it? Do they need it? Can they use it? Like those are certainly not the metrics we should start with when looking for a prospect or a lead, but that's often where most people do yeah. give really, us a couple should... of examples of, of uh, you gave one about uh, punctuality what, what are some other of your personal uh, rules things that you won't tolerate or, or that you will sure so my biggest thing is impact if and I, we'll probably get into this but i was essentially talked into doing this i had no interest in teaching people sales in fact i was kind of afraid of it um my biggest thing is, is I'm not interested in helping somebody further their cause where they're stepping on other people to get what they want. Mm. Impact for me, like genuine linear impact for the right reasons is my biggest. Um, other ones include, I'm not really big on having to deal with clients that have emergencies and fires all the time, mm. right? We're, we're grown ups. Yes, we're a bunch of eight year old kids that are freaking out <laughs> running around in 40, 50 year old bodies, but essentially we're adults and having, having the ability to set and manage our own personal boundaries and be able to treat other people as adults are, are some of the others that I, I kind of use to define who it is that I will and won't work with. Um, and we all have different ones, right? Like I, like I said, um, I'm pretty loose with my language and that doesn't just mean vulgarities. What that really means is I'm going to say what's on my mind and I need to, I need to understand that this, the person that I've, I've allowed to have or own or rent my space by being my client is going to allow me the space to hear what it is that I have to say. And Obviously, that comes after we've taken the time to build a relationship and really establish trust, not just give it, but establish trust and understanding how adults need to speak sometimes because sugarcoating everything and brushing things aside and sweeping stuff under the rug doesn't actually get things done. So there's, there's a few of the others that I use to, to identify who would be a good client. If somebody has a hard time hearing something. Right. None of us want to have criticism, whether it's constructive or not. But when we won't listen to it or we shy away from it, oftentimes that indicates to me somebody who's not willing or ready to grow. Hmm. Yeah, that that's actually a um, pet peeve of mine as well. I like to see growth and progress. I push myself in that direction. And it, it's I don't want to pull people. I want to feel like that I'm I'm joining together with them towards a purpose and an outcome that is a worthy goal. And uh, I I can't babysit people and I don't want to pull them along, drag them behind me against their will. Uh, So uh, these are some really great examples. If you're, if you're listening to this and you're stressed out and, um, and just kind of uh, in a funk, over the types of clients, the type of people that you're working with, um, th- there's a saying that, you know, you attract your own self. You know, wh- whatever's going on in your head, that's what you attract. So if you are in desperation mode, you tend to attract people, clients that and situations that are desperate. Um, so th- this is really good 
uh, food for thought and things to think about as we consider who we are, what do we want, what's the kind of life that we want to live, and then how do we build the business and the practice that's going to give us the life that we want, then how, who are the, the clients, the types of people that we need to build that business, to give us the life that we want. It all works together. This is a really uh, fascinating conversation, Landon. You, you probably have a lot going on. What are you working on right now that's got you really excited? Sure. So the last three years that I've been doing this has been focused around client acquisition. And really what it comes down to is is retaining the right kind of clients long term. Anybody can, anybody can have a one night stand with a client, right? Anybody can do a one-off project. I, I call it playing with your crayons. People who are really good at the thing they do often overlook their favorite aspect of it, or they don't know how to leverage that into that's what they do for clients. We're taking um, a group of people through a process to identify what we call their genius zone and understanding how to repackage that and reposition that and then identify the clients that they've worked with or other clients in their marketplace that are essentially two, three or four levels above what they've been doing the last several years. This is our, our new little pet project. It's called Profit Well, um, and that's, that's what we're doing. Excellent. So it sounds like you've got a lot of fascinating insights and things that um, our listeners will be very interested in. What's the best way to uh, hook up with you to find out more about what you're doing and, and to connect with, with these programs? Yep. It's in my main Facebook group. You can go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Gorilla Juice. Gorilla Juice. Am, yep. So... I am actually known as the sales gorilla. There's a big, long story behind that. Um, <laughs> we won't get into it here. Um, it, that's essentially where um, we hold church. We do it on a fairly regular basis. We've got a group of about 14 and a half, 15,000 people at any given time. And that's where we hang out. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that sounds interesting. We'll put that link up on the Rebelpreneur website. So here's a resource. If you're listening to this, and uh, it resonates, then go check that out um, at uh, facebook.com slash groups slash Gorilla Juice. Landon, this has really been a fun conversation. I appreciate you sharing your insights and your wisdom with us. Any final thoughts that you'd like to leave us with? If you're doing something that feels like work, take a look at it. You might be doing something you'd rather not do. Excellent. Well, I'm going to take that and apply it starting today. I hope that everyone <laughs> listening will do that as well. Let's have some fun with our business. If, if we're going to do this, let's do it and have some fun with it. And um, yeah, make a difference, make money, but let's have fun while we're doing it. I really appreciate that. Landon Porter uh, shows entrepreneurs how to acquire their ideal clients by giving them permission to be themselves. It's about opening relationships, not closing deals, as we have learned. So uh, go check Landon Porter out at Facebook.com slash groups slash Gorilla Juice. Landon, thank you so much for being on Rebelpreneur Radio today. I really appreciate it. Awesome sauce, Ralph. Thanks for having me on. You've been listening to Rebelpreneur Radio with Ralph Brogdon. Download the show notes and much more at Rebelpreneur.com.